If you're at 30% body fat, here is one must-do hack that will improve your health and get you leaner. You ready? When you're eating your meals, eat the protein first, then eat the vegetables, and then eat the rest. That simple eating order tends to cause people to eat less. In fact, it's pretty successful. My, my experience, it works almost every time. And most people at 30% body fat will see a significant reduction in body fat from simply doing that. So again, when you're looking at your plate, eat all the protein first, then eat the vegetables, then eat the rest. You can't have your pudding if you don't eat your meat. Ooh. Is that from a movie? No, that's oh, a song. Pink Floyd, Pink Floyd, Floyd, Floyd. yeah. Wow. Yeah. That, did you know that? Did you guys talk about it before? Did. No, you guys no, talked about that's it. No, I just famous. thought of that because you said the oh, order I, I of yeah. things. Did you know that, Doug? I did know that. All the yeah. bricks in the wall. Mm. Mm. Sorry, Adam. Yeah, yeah, yeah feel sorry. Like, you're out of the loop. So what do you so what do you guys think about this uh this one thing right? I mean uh, first of all, let me Very explain. Very effective. Here's yeah. why I think it here's why I think it works, or why I, I I feel like I know it works. When you first off, protein is the most uh satiety producing of the macronutrients. So if you're looking at your plate and let's say you've got meat, potatoes, and then you've got uh spinach. Okay. If you eat the meat first, the protein kicks that satiety signal in the strongest. Then you move to the next satiety producing thing on your plate, which tends to be the fiber. Mm -hmm. So now you're eating your vegetables. And vegetables, aside from maybe starchy ones, so I'm, I'm not speaking for the starchy vegetables. I'm talking about the non-starchy kind of low calorie vegetables. It's another way to fill up your stomach, get the fiber, and it's also very low calorie. Then by the time you're done with those two things, your appetite tends to be significantly reduced to eat the rest. And so what happens when you eat in this order, in my experience, this one thing right here my clients would end up eating a good three, 400 calories less a day just from doing this. So I didn't tell them to change necessarily their eating. I just told them to eat this order and it almost always uh, resulted in weight loss. So that's all the science to support why you do this. I think the most powerful part of this is the behavioral psychology piece because yes, yes. I'm not telling myself I can't have those mm -hmm. tasty carbs or I can't have that dessert. I can't have that thing. All I'm saying to myself is, hey, just eat this first. And there's, I mean, I play this game with myself. I mean, I'll go into a meal and I'm like, oh man, those French fries or that thing looks really good. It's like, okay, I'm first going to, in fact, I did this not that long ago where we had ordered five guys and I had the, I had um, lettuce wraps, right? So I got two of them and I was like, oh, but I really was craving the French fries. Yeah. That's like what I want. Yeah, I was like, I haven't fries. had French fries in a long time. <laughs> I'm like, French fries sound really good. It was like a Friday night. And I was like, this is, this is the, the treat, right? And I'm like, oh, I shouldn't, you know, I'm getting ready to get, this was right before I started my thing, right? I'm like, oh, I'm getting ready to start that. This isn't going to help that cause at all. I'm like, you know what? No, I'm going to, but I'll just eat that first. And then, and then sure shit, what ends up happening yep. is after I eat those two big old, you know, uh, um, uh, burger wraps, I'm so full. I mean, I had a couple fries yeah. and then that was it versus if I would have went right for the thing that I was like craving at that time and started eating that or eating it simultaneously with it. I would have ate at least double, if not triple the fries. And the other part that is like happens too is because you fill up on that, you don't hit your protein intake. That's right. Yeah. And then I would not, then I would have missed that. So it's a double whammy. You over consume on calories, you get all those carbs, and you under consume on, on protein. protein. And simply yeah. by just saying, "Hey, I'm not going to tell myself I can't have that. I'm just going to prioritize this." And then, mm -hmm. hey, if I'm still craving those French fries, I'm going to enjoy a handful of them. Just do the opposite of what I learned in the restaurant industry. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and it, honestly, it was like. Um, I mean, cause I'm always trying to sell product and that's what I figured out is like, you know, if I could increase the check, I'm going to increase my tip. I'm going to increase, you know, the amount of money I'm taking away. Uh, so let's go ahead and make sure we get chips, bread, uh, uh, you know, these, these snack foods ahead of time with the appetizers that are like carb heavy. Uh, and that's going to stimulate more of the appetite okay. and then the drinks and everything else that's going to kind of help to promote a little bit of that novelty element. Uh, and then you can keep stacking and, and alternating the different types and of food dessert, items. Even though they're stuffed, you throw on the dessert. Still room yeah. for dessert because it's a totally different uh, novel. novel stimulus. You, okay, so uh, what you're saying right now, Justin, um, really taps into um, some brilliance because if you look at traditional eating order, Okay, so I'll, I'll talk about my family's culture. So uh, my family comes from Italy. My parents were born in Italy. And when we would eat meals, and we would have multi-course meals, often my mom cooked everything, you would always start with the pasta. We would never eat meat first. Meat never came first. It was always pasta first. Then we would move on, and then by the second or third course, that's when we would have the meat or fish. Now, why do they eat that way? 
Why is it like that? Because if they did it the other way around, no one would eat the pasta. You wouldn't have room. <laughs> they, they wouldn't eat as much. Yeah. Yeah. They simply wouldn't eat as much and enjoy the food as much or whatever. It's always that first. That's why restaurants serve bread and not jerky or some yeah. other protein. Bread and chips almost That's always. right. Because you can eat more when the order of what I said is flipped. If you look at your plate, and this is what's funny too, we've all been conditioned this way. Someone takes a plate of food and they've got, let's say, meat, uh, rice or meat, potatoes or meat, pasta and vegetables. Here's how people tend to eat it. Either A, they eat the starches first, then they move over to the meat, or they go back and forth and alternate, which is another novelty trick, which actually gets your body because you're changing from savory to sweet or from right. starch to protein. That also gets you to increase. So it, what ends up, what you, what you realize is the way that we eat, the way that we're trained to eat, the way that we're taught to eat, actually encourages overeating. It's been, it's been beaten into us. It's a, it's a culture. So all you got to do is understand the psychology of it, understand the physiology of what's happening, and flip it. So when you take your plate again, and, and I first learned this uh, training clients around the holidays. This is when I really figured this out mm -hmm. because I would this have would be clients, a Thanksgiving tip. Yes, because yeah, yeah. they would always be like, "Oh my god, what am I going to do on Thanksgiving?" Everybody makes it, and I I think there's a lot of value in holidays. I think there's tons of value in enjoying the even the hedonistic aspect of food with people around you. I think there's an element of of quality of life that comes from that. Again, my culture is Italian, so I understand the value of enjoying the food. So I'm not like a a Puritan when it comes to it. Yeah, how dare you not eat Aunt Marge apple cobbler? Yeah, like, like, she how made dare it, you? and you're connecting. she made it with love. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So what I told my clients is, I said, you know, uh, yeah, you know, go and eat whatever you want, but hit 50 grams of protein or whatever their number was first. So get the turkey, eat that first, and then go and eat the rest and see what happens. And through the years of clients telling me and getting feedback and tracking and me experimenting with this, you end up eating less. Yeah. And you're not restricting because here's the deal. The reason why we feel like we're restricting is because our desires, our, our actions are going against our desires. That's what restricting feels like. My desire is to eat more, but I'm preventing myself from doing that, so I'm restricting myself. But if I can match my desire to my goal, it doesn't feel like I'm restricting. So what does that look like? It looks like I eat whatever I want, mix up the order, now I eat less. So I'm not restricting because my desire is to eat as much as I just ate, which happens to be less because I've changed the order. Yeah. And this is why it's such a powerful hack, especially for someone at 30% body fat. Now, does this just make a big difference for someone who's already really lean? Probably not. Then you got to get a little bit more detailed, right? But if you're sitting at 30% body fat, this one thing right here. Massive. Yeah, you're going to lose 10 pounds of body fat yeah. just from doing this one simple thing, which is just changing the oil. I mean, I, I, I think that you, you can't overstate uh, the value, too, of you're, you're naturally going to probably, not probably, you will increase that person, whoever it is, their daily protein intake. Yes. And everybody I ever trained was under eating protein. And so you're 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 kind of handling two things here. Mm -hmm. You're either naturally going to reduce calories and increase protein. If that's paired with some sort of strength training at that time, oh yeah. This person is going to see incredible results just by doing and that. And not to mention even on the controlled studies which I've I've recited so many times on the show, but if you have a, a calorie controlled diet with different groups, the only difference being one group a lot of their calories come from protein, so it's high protein, the other group it's less. Even though the calories are the same, the high protein group loses more body fat and builds more muscle. So it's it is a double whammy of a hack where you eat less plus you bump your protein, which means you build more muscle, burn more body fat, on top of the fact that you're eating less calories, which also helps you burn more body fat. So it's just a win-win. You know, along these lines, um, this is now this is connected to parenting, what I'm about to say, but <laughs> as we're talking about <clears throat> you know, eating differently and how the world basically organizes meals, starch first, and then, you know, you kind of move through to make you eat more type of deal. Uh, you know, I had an experience this morning with my daughter. I won't go into too much detail, but she's, you know, 14 going to 15. And, you know, there's moments when raising kids where every parent's going to go through this, where you just get tested, you get tested and it's going to be a challenge. And you're going to tell them you don't want them to do something or do something. They don't want to do it. And you end up going back and forth. And, <clears throat> Just having realizations around parenting in the sense that, um, you know, the biggest challenge with being a parent, there's a lot of work for sure around being a parent, you know, getting up early, losing sleep, preparing them for this, making them food, they have extra clothes, like blah, blah, blah. It's a lot of work, but that's not the hard part. That's hard, but that isn't the hard part. The hard part is if you want to raise healthy kids, both physically 
mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, you got to raise them differently than pretty much everyone else. They're going to have to be the weird kid. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. is hard. And man. the sooner that you can communicate you have to that, accept that. that well, not only do you have to accept it, but then you have to be able to communicate to them that they understand that. Yeah. They mm-hmm. understand why. Uh, and I, I don't know. I think sometimes we uh, we underestimate how well kids can understand it at a very young age. Katrina actually had a, a, this conversation on the way talking about Max and just the importance of us being consistent, The important, how important it is to us to talk to him like he's an adult, like explaining things that we think are probably too complex for him. You'd be surprised how much they're not yeah, and like oh, yeah. letting them understand that. And I think I think when, if and when, I'm not quite there yet with, with the kids where they're, they're testing me in that way. But I believe that if I do a good job of communicating that hey our our family is different we're going to be different we want to be different like i'm gonna that's a message that my son is going to receive from us from a very early age all the way so that when these moments come it's like you know that's what we don't just follow the crowd and what all the other girls are doing or what all the other guys are doing like that's like you we don't want to be like everybody else from a health and fitness perspective it's easy to understand right if you ate the way everybody ate if you were inactive the way everybody else is inactive uh, you're going to probably be fat, sick, and unhealthy. That's just a fact. I think fitness people understand that. So it's like when you're working out and you're consistent and you're eating healthy and it's a part of your life, and then you go out with friends, your regular family members, your cousins, and, and people around at work or whatever, <clears throat> you're the weird one. You just are. Why? Because you're the one that's not doing what everybody else is doing. So they're ordering certain foods and you're eating in a different way. They're saying, let's go out and do this. And you're saying, no, I got to wake up early to go work out. They're you're, you're the weird one because you're not doing what everybody else does. And you, the reason why you do that is you know you have to be different if you want to be fit and healthy. Well, that doesn't just stop with physical fitness right. and health. That expands to mental health, spiritual health, emotional health. So it's like you have a teenage kid. I don't know what the stats are on how, how long the average, let's say, 15-year-old spends on social media. It's, it's hours a day. So if you tell your kid... I'm going to let you be on social 30 media. minutes. And that's it. Five that's, minutes. Yeah. You know, that's okay. what I say. You get, five, you get a total of five minutes. Okay. <laughs> but everybody else does it. You're the only one. All my friends, this is how they communicate with each other. Mm. And so, and it's a struggle because it's like, okay, well, that's true. You are the only one that you can't communicate with your friends through DMs and using all these other, you know, social media. They, you are missing out on the jokes that they talk about and the trends because they're on social media. But then I always remember this, like, who's raising my kid? Me or the world? Definitely don't want the world raising my kids because I know what that looks like. So it's going to be, I'm sorry, but it's going to be, you are going to stand out. You are not going to be like everybody else. And that's the point. That's actually the point. The point is I don't want you to be it's so, like it's everyone else. It's so ironic to me, I guess, like, you know, growing up, how we grew up and it's, it's like now those type of values are punk rock. Yeah. You know? like I know. To, to be, um, a little bit more on the, uh, I guess, conservative side or the more family values driven, like that's so abnormal, you know? And it's like, it's kind of, I mean, I, I look at that as a positive in terms of like, cause I was always like, I just want to be cool, dude. I'm tired of like, you know, being the guy that's like, you know, Ned Flanders and, mm. you know, but Hey, now it's like, uh, it, it's almost like you're, you're rebelling at this point because the world is so different uh, in comparison. But yeah, it's, you're not going to be like everybody else. We have these conversations all the time and it's just, you have to keep reinforcing it because it, it's hard. Man. It's it's so, it's so normalized. Cause this is what I keep getting from my kids. When I argue with my, my, my teenagers, when we go back and forth, they're like, um, but that's not normal. This is normal. It's normal for kids to dress like this. It's normal for, yeah, I don't want you to be normal. Yeah. Like that's it's hypersexualized is normal, not uh, moving all day is normal. Yeah, uh, being on social media all the time yeah. is normal. Uh, I don't complaining want you. is normal. You know, it's going to be really cool to hear. Um, obviously, we'll still be very close friends this later on at uh, this time in your life because you have such a huge gap. Yeah, and uh, you uh, you know openly are far more involved and integrated in the decisions around the kids when they're younger now with the two younger ones. Yeah, because I feel like you see this now because of the challenge you're having with the teenager. I also feel like you will be more proactive totally. about with the younger ones to head that off. Like you'll, I, this is why, I mean, it's why I feel so blessed to have friends that are good fathers that are already experiencing things older than me. Cause what goes, like I said, what happens for, or what goes through my head is like, I'm going to plant that seed early. 
That way, when those those moments come years later, he's been hearing it from his dad for a long time. Can I tell you the biggest mistake I made or what I would change? Hey, sorry to interrupt. Look, I have a free guide that teaches you how to lose fat in three steps, just three steps that will burn the most amount of body fat and help keep it off. This guide is totally free. We're giving it to everybody right now. If you want it, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right. Back to the show. Hmm. By far, it isn't talking about it. That would have been good. It's still a mistake, you know, or implementing early. That was a mistake. It's finding, is really putting effort into surrounding ourselves with people that are going to be on the same page. Oh, yeah. Because otherwise they're isolated. And all their friends are different. Yeah. And then it's tough. Now yeah, it's they like, need to hear it from other people too, yes. not just you. They need I mean, to have other friends that are like I mean, that. that's a that's a that is a ideal perfect situation. But there is still a chance that you don't get to control who your friends your your kids' friends are no. too, right? I mean, we talked about this other Yeah. What lengths would we go yeah. to, to, to control that? Yeah, sometimes you gotta make a So at universe. least if you were planning the seed and talking about it and saying that we're different and they do have these friends that you they they're different then they they knew that. They knew that from the beginning. Like we're gonna be different, like our yeah. family's gonna be different. And then I, I also think a lot of that has to go too with how how you lead your own life because uh what what's tough is if your child doesn't uh aspire to be like you at all yeah so i mm -hmm. think first is being a leader that my son looks up to and aspires to be like like and so if i can be that type of dad first then letting him know like hey your, your dad's different if you haven't figured that out and it's i'm different because i walked a different path than everybody else and I, you will too like that's you're going to be special you're going to all these things you're proud about your daddy that he's this 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 and this like the reason why is because i didn't follow everybody else and so you know you're going to find that you're gonna have close friends that you really love and you care about and you hang out with and they're going to do some things different than you and that's what's going to separate you, you on a logical uh, basis i think a lot of people want to understand this right if you look at the data on uh kids and anxiety, depression, obesity, like pretty much every measure of health, it's getting worse oh, and worse and worse. Incredibly so, worse. And so we, it's like, okay, well, what's causing that? Well, whatever's causing that is what everybody's doing. What everybody else is doing is what's causing that. Yeah. Yeah. So to not do that, uh, you're, you're, all, you're already on the right foot. You're already making the right decision by going, okay, we're not going to be like everyone else. So let's look at what they're doing. Let's try and be different. Now, that's logical. I think people can see that. The hard part is now doing it because you get so much pushback and all their friends are different. And even their friends' parents are looking at you like, why are you so mm -hmm. controlling? Why are you so strict? Why don't you, you know, whatever. And it's like, well, because I, it's like. Because you care. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I care. I care. You know, that's what I'm showing. That was a conversation this morning too. I told my daughter, yeah. I said, uh, sometimes I'm going to be your friend, but most of the time I'm going to be your dad. And right now I'm your dad. Like, so you can like me or not. That's dad doesn't care if you like him or not. Yeah. Friend does, but right now it's dad, and yeah. so you probably hate me, but it's just the way it's you know yeah, just yeah. the way it's going to be. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's rough, dude. <laughs> it's hard, man. It's really hard. especially for you know, I, and I feel for divorced parents who have dual. That's custody. A whole, that's what I, to me when you told the story this morning, like right away, I'm like, man, I just feel for you because that's already a hard conversation. Well, what's or hard about it is I'm in, in, I already have this this deep insecurity that my kids don't want to stay with me. They don't want like me. You know, yeah, yeah. so in teenagers, what do they always say to their parents when they're mad? Right. I hate you. I don't yeah, want to yeah. be here. Yeah. But Can't now now she has another house to go. And to. And not to mention they the teenagers are incredibly good at manipulating. Oh, yeah. so <laughs> like w whether she openly admits she knows that like subconsciously she knows that. And so yeah. she knows that's a button. Yo, you know, so. God. Oh, it hurt <laughs> me, too. It's so it's hard. Like, yeah. and she says that. And but I, let, I don't let her know. A lot know. of times just emotional outbursts and they, yeah. they're just not they don't really know why that they think that way. <laughs> you try and like dig at it and you try to be all logical and like let's 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 have a conversation about this and it's yeah. really just like i yeah. just don't want to ah, yeah. you know punch hole in the wall yeah <laughs> now you said i can't believe you said that about ethan today that is so out of character yeah. for him never like he doesn't have outbursts or like has like tantrum he's not that kid like, no. ever and so uh yeah this is all new it's like um, a, a whole side that's because he's going through this new development and testosterone is really kicking in and um that that whole like sort of like testy he's real testy like that's yeah. a real thing yeah, you know yeah. and it's 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 strange but i mean i get it obviously because i went through that at, you know at a different it was a different experience for me but it was like had I, it been a curveball I, from him though right very curveball yeah because i didn't see that coming you've out been of saying him. that you've been mm -hmm. saying that about everett forever he's he's predictable in that regard like i there's gonna be like little violent outbursts and <laughs> 
I'm going to have to kind of like create barriers around that. Put pillows around. Yeah. And like, I mean, I've been having a lot of conversations really just to prep Courtney for like these types of events that are going to occur in the future. You know, one thing my wife tells me that's really good, although sometimes I don't hear it because if I'm in the moment, I don't want to hear anything, but it's, it's true. Ask yourself this. What is 30 year old, you know, my kid going to think about this? What are they going to think about this when they're 30? Yeah. Exactly. Are they going to look back and go, man, I'm glad, Dad. Thanks, thanks Dad. Yeah, thanks for like, yeah. keeping this consistent. Totally. You know, and this, this grounding. Because you're, really... you're going to know your kids as adults for way longer. Now, as, you, as you and Courtney sit back and you kind of evaluate, because, of course, uh, Ethan being this way is such a curveball. He's such like a mild manner, quiet, good kid. Great. I mean, both your kids are great kids, but, I mean, he's – I wouldn't have expected that either. You've always yeah. said he's got more of a demeanor like totally. her. So obviously, and you guys are very uh, in tune parents. You see this, and then you and her, are you guys like, you know, trying to like, okay, obviously the testosterone, he's going through that right now. He had a school change too, right? Yep. So yeah, that's that's change. a dynamic at that age, a dynamic shift of like, hey, I'm no longer- kind of a, a girl interest. Oh, know, also into new. a girl. Uh, yeah, and so- yeah, so we we tried, and, and again, and this is where like it's a team effort, and I'm always like we're we're kind of pulling each other aside and like discussing like what was that, you know, like and Courtney will kind of give me uh, intel on the day, like how it went, and like where these things are kind of emerging, and uh, yeah, and so you, you start looking back at all those things, and you're like, wow, okay, uh, I wonder, you know, and you kind of th- I wonder if there's a conversation there, like like some of these kids like are part of other sports teams and they're kind of like scoffing at what he's doing because he's been like mentioning to us all of a sudden he doesn't want to do gymnastics anymore and it's Uh, like you know this so that's a whole nother thing too because he he has to devote a lot of time during the week to that it's like four practices a week for he does like at least three and a half to four hours like blocks of so now now this makes sense to me why you like you were adamant about him not quitting and stuff like that is because it's almost it's obvious already to me just from what you're communicating that this is like outside influence that's making yes. like either he's all of a sudden getting teased for being in gymnastics or I have know, a sense the cool that kids happened, yeah. yeah or the cool kids are like oh that's not a real sport it's you know what i'm saying and so maybe making him feel that way and he's interested in a girl so he wants to be cool wants to fit in well, maybe she's just, a cheerleader and she's around the sports teams football so, basketball stuff yeah. so uh, yeah and so my handling of it it's really like um i'm I'm trying to go out of my way and like cut my weekend now involvement of like what I want to do. Like I'm taking him to the games there. I'm taking him to events so he can be around, um, you know, those friends of his, his, his girl interest. I, I won't want to call her his girlfriend yet. Cause I don't think it's, you know, official. It's not on yet. Facebook. Yeah, it's yeah, it's, it's on a Facebook. status <laughs> change or anything, uh, you know, it's significant like that. Yeah. So, <laughs> But I, I'm like, I want him to, ex- if that's like the thing, like I want him to be able to experience it and like be around, but also still be disciplined, still be dedicated to what he started out on. Uh, and the thing is, he loved it. He loved it. He loves coaching little kids too. And that's like a job he has on top of like also just being part of the team of like the gymnastics uh, team. Uh, and so it's, I don't know, to me, I guess, and, and I know we've all, like Courtney had quit, um, uh, volleyball when she was in high school and like she looks back and kind of regrets it because she was really good at it uh and and so we kind of had that discussion i i went through the grueling pain of like being on a team that like they were never going to play me and it, and it was just the politics and this was like a baseball team and like i knew right away my friends quit i was the only one left with younger guys that all played together on like spring teams and all that and the coach was like his son it was all his friends and so he literally i got to play one game in the entire season and oh, i was wow. better than all these freaking kids yeah. you know? <laughs> I had a year like and that. i just oh it just, and i did and that happened in bas- basketball too and and it was just like, well, why would why would you put your son through that? Why would you have him go through like that sort of like a, a pun- it's like a punishment? It's not a punishment; it's a life lesson. Yeah, yeah. This is this is huge. This is yeah. what I want for him to name, learn. Name, yeah. name one life lesson that was enjoyable. None. Yeah. Life Crickets. lessons are never enjoyable. Yeah. They're always hard. That's why it's a life lesson. And it, and it sets yeah, it sets the tone for this is real life. You're gonna be. Uh, and I just had this conversation with a. a cousin of mine young cousin of mine who's in early 20s and uh you know he started this sales job and he's he's he killed it first month like 
top top car sales oh, just crushing runs it. in the family <laughs> yeah, he's, he's definitely a closer Uh-oh. he's a killer yeah so i'm all excited cheering him on and then uh right now he this is one of my cousins that has a really really rough upbringing and then he's right away um communicating to me like you know he's i've been you know telling him to, to learn everything you can and be asking and uh you obviously caused some jealousy right away right i mean top guy brand new guy comes in i'm sure you guys are familiar uh, oh, with yeah. uh, being, oh, yeah. being the rest that of the staff there yeah not yeah. everybody's gonna love you you know no, what i'm saying no, when you're no. like that and he has this chip on his shoulder because of how he was raised that he's got that kind of like you know, uh, 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 lone wolf, like F you all figure it out. Yeah. If you're going to be that way. Mm-hmm. And you know, it, it's already caused him talking about like, he's already looking for other jobs. Oof. And I'm just like, Whoa, 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 bro. Like, that's not what you do. Like that's you. All right. I said, your job now is here's the facts. You, there's going to be a lot of people that now don't you win them over. And you leave yes. Them. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I said, and I told him a book for that. I said, mm-hmm. there's a great book for that. It's called 360 leader by John C. Maxwell. It's about being in middle management or lower, lower on the ranks and leading the people above you. I said, so your goal now, knowing these people don't like you is to continue to wipe, wipe their ass with the floor or wipe their, wipe the floor with their ass, <laughs> wipe the floor with their ass. I know that is, I was like, that didn't come out right. Wipe the floor oh with God, their, so with their ass, ass <laughs> and like destroy them Speaking month in and month out and then also win them over. Yes. Yeah. So how can you yes. in an environment instead of you because you know you're talented and someone else will t- pay you more no. and take you on like no 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 like you're and if you do that what you're going to find is you're just going to find that in another place yep. and you're going to yeah. keep running from this versus learning how to adapt in that type of an environment and still succeed. Totally. There's the lesson, there's the challenge and I was kind of laying into him about that because it's like you know, just because you're super good and you know you're good and then you could go somewhere else and someone else is going to tell you like, oh, come work for me. Uh, you'll, I'll do this for you. I'll do that. For you. No, 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 no. You should stay right there. I'm not- this is why I told him, I said, you don't, you're not allowed to leave. Mm-hmm. And so not only are you the top guy consistently kicking everyone else, but you've learned everything you can from everybody that works there. Yep. Until you can you can be all of them, you got all their strengths, and you've consistently whipped their ass. Okay, you come talk to me after a couple of years of doing that, and you have you've, and you can run that place. Mm-hmm. Even at your position. That's what'll happen, actually. You've learned, management. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Because that that skill set, that ability right now, will will carry over, and, and even if you don't stay in this field and translate to success. And no, what he's showing, what he's else. demonstrating is he has talent. Yeah. Yes. But not the skills yet to what you're talking about is developing some real skills. Real leadership he's got skills. got the talent. That's right. Yeah. Does he look at you like a mentor? Is it, is it yeah. sink in? Oh, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. So he's like, I can, that's why I could tell. Like, I was really, I mean, I'm giving you guys the PG version. Like, I really laid into him about it because he also responds to that, right? He's, he's, I mean, I told you, he made my childhood look like a cakewalk, mm. like way, way harder. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, he's been everything from, you know, wear, having to wear the ankle bracelet and, and oh, well, yeah, okay. he's wow. definitely been in and out of trouble. And this is like, he's, you know, he's now a father. He had a kid really early. So good for him. He went and wow. he started selling cars and crushed it. Yeah. I Great knew he would. Job, too. I knew he would. He's got a mouthpiece that's on good him. Too, he's a because, smart kid. Yeah. Cause that's good money. Yep. And, yep. It's in, and there's a lot of potential there. Good for him. So, but okay. To that point. So he crushes everybody. He wins. I mean, he beats everybody at the, all the veterans, everything first month in. But he was just doing whatever they told him. They're like, sell everything. And then he's learning like, oh, there's bigger rips on this car than this sure, car. Sure. And he got really upset. He got really upset that they, the you know, the GM just wanted him to sell as many cars because yeah, yeah. that's what he gets the best off of. But there's definitely certain things that, and then there's the guys on the finance on the back end that are manipulating the deal so they make more money. Yeah. And so what he saw at the end of this was like, he didn't Everybody's make, looking out for themselves. He didn't make nearly as much as like he could have or should have. It's all right, it's month one. That's right. That's yeah. what I explained that's to him. I said, I, and I explained to him too. I said, "You're still you're jumping ahead to the earn phase of your mm-hmm. life right now. You're still in the learn phase right now. You're learning. Damn, right? what a great line! Yeah, I said this. Then you will get to that. I wish yeah. I could take credit for it. I stole it from somebody else. So that I mean, it's such a true point though. When yeah. you're at this stage of your career in your life, you're you 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 you're so concerned about the earning phase. You're still at the learning phase, bro. You're not a master at your craft. You're fucking doing one month, bro. Yeah, right. And I know you did the best, and so you feel real good and a great job. But you're far from considering yourself a master. You, I." I told him, I said, I want you to feel so confident you could go open one of these things. Like, do you understand the P&Ls? Do you understand what, how the GM, like, you need to understand all that. You have an opportunity right now to do that. And if you have terrible people that are above you and next to you working with you, it's not leave that or run from that or get a chip and then, oh, I'm not even going to socialize. I'm like, your next goal should be, and you can, I said, you could have this feeling of like, I don't like them. Right. You can have that inside, but I don't want them to feel that. They want I want you to think them to feel like you like them. And I said, in the long game, you will you will win. I told him a story, and I won't tell the whole story on here, but 
you know, there, I, I worked with a boss like that for, for many years. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I tell you, and I gave him, I said, I gave him a lesson. I said, listen, him to this day, I said, I had, I had lunch with him not that long ago. And I still inside, I have that from the, the, you know, young 20 year old me, but he had never knew that. He never knew that. And I said, and he was le- a legit dick. And, and listen, I said, he's a, he's a, you know, he's at a high level making pretty good money where he's at in his life. Now he's a slave to a company and he makes X amount and I make about 10 times that. So who do you think won in that situation? Yeah. And he, he's not the wiser of that. I took everything I could learn from him. I didn't, I didn't run. I didn't quit. And I continued to grow and elevate. Now it took me 10 years later to get to this place. But mm-hmm. had I had that attitude of F you and go somewhere else, like it would have been a whole different path for me. Too. Yeah. hundred percent. hundred percent. You know, I'm watching you move right now. I got to ask you this, bro. You tore your pec. How long <laughs> did you tear your pec? Three months ago. Has it been three months? Uh, two, maybe two. Maybe two months. Yeah, yeah I, I need to look. I, need, I, I mean, I literally have the the video of when it, when it okay, happened. So, so for people who don't know, like Adam legit tore his pec. I mean, bruising, like the whole deal. Okay. And, not only do I see you move, like there's nothing wrong with you. I, you're posting videos of your comeback workouts, and you're hitting chest, chest. pressing. You're doing legit chest exercises. Yeah. I am taking it easy though. Like I'm, I, I, I press. Uh, you tore your pet. <laughs> yeah. <no>. Okay. <laughs> it's, now, it's crazy. Now, this Bro, is BBC just, is is crazy. This is an anecdote, uh, but there's a lot of anecdotes like this around uh, the. Pet Bro, it's like the third BPC, anecdote I have. It's, really anecdote weird. Weird. it's BPC yeah. one five seven, and you're putting it directly into the pack. Yeah. Okay, for anybody who's ever worked with a legit muscle tear, the kind that causes uh, like un- like you know bruising, bleeding, right? There's bleeding there. You don't, you're not able to go and train it a couple months later. August third. So what what are we right now? So a month and a half. Month. It's not even two months. Yeah, yeah, a month and a half. Six <laughs> weeks. Yeah. That's a twelve week, bro. It's crazy. On average, if you tear a muscle like that, where there's that kind of bruising, it's like four you're, months. You're right? eight to twelve weeks minimum. BBC one five seven. Okay, I mean, we've. I know you've definitely tried everything, yeah. but and I've said this before. It's it's it works so well. It's strange. it's scary. Yeah. It's scary. Like as I'm doing things, I'm like I feel good, but I the, my trainer brain who's experienced many injuries. Like, be careful! Be careful! Be goes careful. tells me that like this I shouldn't be doing this yet. Which you know it also made me think this since you brought this up, like because I this has been going through my head personally. Like I haven't been Six sharing weeks, this. That's crazy. I know. Well, it's like some of these pro athletes you see this stuff. Now you know. Yeah. And and it's like, but you know, DPC's like, been around for a bro, long time, bro. Yeah. Kudos to them though to be imagine being a high level running back in the NFL and you tear an Achilles or an MCL or an ACL and everybody else takes a year to recover that yeah. and you're back on the field in eight weeks. You're not like, just like going back to work at your computer. Yeah. You're, you're, you're literally yeah. playing. Somebody get McCaffrey some of that Yeah. Stuff. It's, like, <laughs> oh, no. it's like these guys come back so fast at such a high level. I can only imagine the uh, like the psychological part of like knowing that, God, I shouldn't be this good already, but then feeling that. It's a, yeah. it's a trip. It so. works really well when it's <laughs> Site injected, especially yeah. if it's like tissue any, damage. Any yeah. tissue damage. It's That's so it, crazy because, like, I just show you guys, like, I seriously was embarrassed how you know my finger grew back. It was almost. Yeah. Like, I'm like, am I a lizard? That, like, sounds, that sounds funny. <laughs> yeah, it grew back. Like, like it never even happened. No, no, this stuff's legit. I, now, now the problem is people get the gray market stuff, which we talked to Doctor Seeds about. He scared the crap out of me with that. He's like. Oh yeah, it could be off by a couple, you know, amino acids, and it it's still BBC, but it does some other shit. So you might not wanna, <laughs> yeah. If you want something like that, we have partners at mphormones.com that we've edited. They're doctors. It comes from FDA regulated uh, uh, farmers compound pharmacy, so it's legit. It's not gray market stuff. Can you but, still get BBC right now? I heard there was they had a pentadeca. Yeah, they changed organite. The, Argonite? Argonite. Pentadeca Argonite. So it is bioidentically uh, the same as BPC. Oh, okay. But it's a, they've combined it with the arginine molecule. It actually is supposed to be a little bit more effective. Okay, so is this the, huh. is this the the game that the supplement industry has always played? Okay, yeah, so, yeah. so explain you have to explain that because this was the this, this was, is why it's so hard to little, regulate little switcheroo. Yes. They're trying really hard to hammer compound pharmacies. Uh, I, I think it's obvious why. I think the G, the GLP one scenario is exploding yeah. and these companies bringing a lot of eyes and attention these there. pharma companies that sell these brand name glp ones like ozempic wigovi yeah. manjaro you know you're gonna buy that it's a thousand dollars a month or 800 bucks a month expensive. or you can get it from a compound farms for like three way a cheaper month. did you and it's the same thing yeah so they're trying hard to hammer compound pharmacies to prevent them from doing anything sure and yeah. bpc works hurting their profits. so well for injuries 
like I said, six weeks, bro. This it's like you 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 got you healed at least two times as fast, but probably more than that. Yeah. It works so well. Of course, they're going to want that to be brand yeah. name only yeah. and no compound pharmacies because yeah, yeah. you could buy it. And you, you put in the fact too, man, imagine if I was actually eating correctly too. Like I wasn't even like feeding myself because that would have accelerated too was actually eating I high, mean, you're, high the, protein. The, and, the, the, the bruising was oh, down yeah, your no, bicep. My whole, my whole bicep was all, was all bruised. It was nasty. I mean, so right after the injury, I couldn't, I mean, I couldn't open up my, I had to keep my arm. I thought I was going to be in, a, I thought when I came back to work that week, that week, next week, I thought I was going to be in a sling. I saw you do inclined dumbbell. Did you have flies? I did flies. Flies. Yeah. What does it feel like at the end? So I'd use the cable and okay. it uh, it actually feels okay. What actually feels weird, it almost feels like almost like something's missing in that area. Just oh, a little yeah. bit. Like it's like feels like there's like yeah, a, little, tore it. a little cave or something right there. So it does feel weird. But I mean it doesn't hurt and it feels fine. And my my shoulders almost back. I woke up today excited because uh, in the morning time I still have the, sh the the shoulder stuff because obviously sleeping it rolls back. And now you're combining it with thymus and beta. So that's the combo. The you way. had me do that. That's the Wolverine stack. We're, so okay, what's the difference? I don't understand the so thymus BPC, and beta. connective tissue, collagen, thymus and beta, uh, muscle fibers, actin. But both ha have crossover and they both work synergistically. So it's like one plus one equals three oh, when wow. you use them together. Oh, yeah. Wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. I and wish they I would have done, yeah. done it the whole time. Yeah. I Doug, I look up uh, BPC 157 mouse studies. There's this one study on Achilles where they tear the Achilles of these mice. Yeah. Give some BPC, <laughs> some not. <laughs> I, and it's like, crazy. Bro, when I hear that, when I hear that, I can't help but picture <laughs> how ridiculous that has to be. Like, really? Can you really like just cut the yeah. Achilles of a mouse? Yeah. Little razor guy. Yes. Just, oh, <laughs> that oh, just sounds yeah. crazy. Like know. that, you could do uh, that. I sorry to interrupt. We have a free guide titled "Understanding Your Mood, Stress, and Sleep." It tackles all of those things from a health and longevity perspective. It's a totally, totally free guide. So just click on the link at the top of the description below. I have to bring this up before I forget because it's perfect timing for this. It's the most ridiculous study I've ever seen. And what I had it? to like see if it was real because I was like, I, didn't, I don't think it's real. I think I'm getting like punked here. Right. I'm wondering if Doug was part of this study just because like Japan and uh, the U.S. kind of combined together. Uh, so they... And I don't know, they won some kind of Nobel Prize for this as well, which, okay, and it was on anal breathing. Wait, 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 wait. Anal breathing? Wait a minute. In water. Wait a minute. Sal's been doing this for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I've, He's like, I've mastered I've this been, technique. I've been doing this for years, <laughs> decades. What, is that called farting? Like, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So they based it off of some, like, fish, I guess, that, like, it has the ability, like, if their head's out of the water, like, I guess they could still, like... So you could put your head underwater, bubbles. put your ass up in the air, and breathe. So no does it doesn't way. connect to your no lungs. So here, yeah, here's no the way. thing, and, and I read further into it. I guess like there's like some kind of liquid, like oxygenated liquid that they can like insert, and it has some effect in terms of like oh, that's I've seen that being able to get you more oxygen. Uh, that's like uh, in the your movie, system. I brought this up. That's like the movie. Uh, uh, what was the what? Did you remember him bringing no, up no, anal no, breathing, breathing thing? No, no, no. The liquid. I think I remember that. Yes, uh, into the rectum through the anus. Okay, so do you, I? Yes, I did bring this up, except I didn't say the anal part. What was that movie? <laughs> it's just kind of a hey, just the most big. <laughs> so I left out the anal part. Hold on a second. <laughs> no, it's not. You guys, twelve. Listen, there's there's a yes. there's a liquid that they invented that they they pack full of oxygen that you yeah. could use. And never have to breathe again. That's the important part, not the anal part. <laughs> That's where they insert it. No, anal, anal part is definitely the biggest. This is what part. gave the Nobel Prize. What like, was, what was that movie? The, uh, the Abyss. Is it that where they go underwater and they oh, find yeah. those aliens? Yeah, and amazing. the only way they could do is the that pressure. The, of they have the, to breathe in that liquid. That's yeah. the, that's that's cool though, right? Yeah. You know what that's, that's good cool, for? But I don't know about that. You know what that's good for? Application of it. Good for? it uh, so they're looking at that for people who have injuries, can't breathe. Yeah. So to prevent organ death, they'll inject them or okay. give them this liquid. Yeah, because they were trying to associate it with like COVID and, and, and like people having respiratory issues of like, and I was like, oh great, this yeah. is going to be the new treatment. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Why is it always in the butt? Why? Why? Stop. <laughs> Stop. Anyways, hey, I got to uh, say something. Uh, we all did that photo shoot that you love so much, Justin. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, well, we're all our suits. We're all in our suits. So Glad lot, it wasn't video. A lot of compliments on the suits. Uh, Stay in Liberty, bro. Listen. Stay in Liberty. No, I got to trip off this, right? So Justin looked great. He did not wear a State in Liberty suit, except he had to have his tailored because obviously he's a jack dude. 
My suit's off the rack, so was yours. Yeah, yeah. The state and liberty is so crazy. If yeah. you're, if you have muscle, it's already form fitted. Yeah. If you have muscle on your body, you know what a pain in the ass it is to buy a suit because you buy a suit fits your shoulders, but now you're swimming in it on the bottom, or if it fits your waist, your arms don't fit. Turns into a blouse real I, quick. My state and liberty suits off the rack, yes. literally off the rack. It fits my arms, my shoulders, my waist looks good, the shirt looks good, everything looks good. I got so I posted some of those videos uh, that day because uh, I had the li a, um, IG live or whatever for the day. What the hell? call it day in life um and so many people actually dm me like thanking for introducing the that suit i just i don't think people realize until you get it it's the most comfortable suit i've Stretchy, ever worn too yeah so not only does it fit incredible but it's actually comfortable mm -hmm. it's the only suit i've ever owned that i'll leave the jacket on at dinner yes yes so like yeah. i it's like that comfortable that I, I i can move Shredded. in the jacket and have dinner and not feel uncomfortable at all any other suit if i were to sit down and have dinner i've got to take it off hanging on my it's the only way i'll wear a tie because i wasn't wearing the suit but yes. i was wearing the shirt i can't button that top button dude it it, it no. like literally chokes yeah, yeah yeah no so at my grandmother's funeral i had the state and liberty button down shirts when i did take off my jacket i had family members come up and say well did you get your 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 shirt tailored like no this isn't even tailored because it comes in at the waist yeah because mm -hmm. button down shirts same problem it's like a square be, yeah it's super baggy around the bottom I hate that hate that so i hate I. that no no, no, no it's like yeah. all tailored no no looks, looks really fire, good dude yeah. I, lo I love their stuff. i got so i got to tell you guys i got to tell you guys a story my wife Maybe she's okay with me telling this. She does. So she she texted me. <laughs> she did. So so she's driving up right now, impromptu, uh, a couple hours up to Sacramento to be with my aunt. My aunt's having a tough time after the the loss, you know, my grandmother's death. Mm -hmm. So she's driving up there, and the kids fall asleep in the car. And you guys know this when you have kids, little kids, and they fall asleep, and you need to pull over to pee. Sorry, either I, if I pull over to pee, kids are gonna wake up. Now we're screwed. <laughs> right, right. So I got to figure out how to hold this. Oh. Well, she's texting me, and she's like. I can't hold this. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I gotta pull over. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't know what I'm gonna do. So in the, in the, in the meantime, I had to put my phone down. We were meeting, so I couldn't you know talk with her. And she's like, "I'm gonna pee my pants. I don't know what I'm gonna do." So then we're done with talking. I check my phone. She's like, "I figured out a great pee hack." I'm like, "What did you do, Jessica? <laughs> what exactly did you do?" She's like, "I grabbed a diaper from the middle console." No, she didn't. She did, bro. No, she, she didn't. Did. She did. <laughs> she just. She put it down her Bro, pants. Hey, that's how gangster you are. You hey, don't want your kids wow. to wake up, dude. Hey, she's like, those things absorb a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, that's what I would be most afraid of is like, I'm an adult. Is this going to oh hold my, all? Is it, it held everything. Oh, my God. Wow. She's like, I'm hey, nervous with she. Hey, that's, <laughs> she's like, hey, she goes, hey, hey that's, a, that's a Pampers commercial waiting to happen. It is. Uh, it's yeah. a mom <laughs> hack. I bet you there's moms wow. listening right now who did that. I said to her, that's I'm like, there's an astronaut That's the first time I heard that one. I'm like, weren't you afraid? Remember, these are diapers for, you know, two-year-old i'm like did you were you afraid she goes well i was peeing really slow just the case she goes but absorbed everything oh, i'm totally fine oh, no like, way oh, dude, that's oh so my funny. god that's yeah. hilarious literally just happened like, like two hours ago <laughs> that's a pampers commercial yeah. right there i'm yeah. like can i tell yeah, the story yeah, yeah. you know she's like maybe yeah i told it yeah, yeah. <laughs> there it is <laughs> yeah there it is anyway that's, that's i got so um i gotta tell you about one of our other sponsors um viori has a a down jacket now that I'm gonna get like a really nice, Ooh. nice down jacket. Hell it's finally yeah. getting cold order. out, so that you know I have to start looking into. Have that. you guys ever owned a down jacket? Like, oh, I've oh, oh, I never the most I, comfortable. Thing. I never did until I went out to the Midwest and like experienced real cold, and it was like you can't you can't just wear more sweatshirts. You it know? goes through. Well, the completely through you. The best part about down jackets, in my opinion, is the the like the technology. So you, they're also great when it's not that cold. That's so right. it's like. They're so lightweight that it could just be, oh, it's like, you know, you're not, and, and it, you're you, not sweating your butt yeah, off. Yeah, you're not sweating your butt off because it's lightweight like oh. that. But then it's also, if it gets really, really cold, it's, it's a, it's a trip. If you've never owned one yeah. and you, I remember the first it's like time insulation. I, I actually didn't get a down jacket until like a real legit one until not even that long. It was maybe 10 years ago was the very first one. I had, and that was the thing that tripped me out. I was like, oh, this is what all the fuss about. This yes. is why everybody rocks these. It's They're light, I can wear, yeah, I can wear them when it's, when it's kind of warm outside still and it doesn't, I don't get all hot and sweaty in it, yet it could be freezing outside and it's so protective. Yeah. It's a trip to, to experience. I, I, did, I just ordered it. So oh, that's wow. what I got. Oh, yeah. that, uh, a lot of colors or just like one or two colors? You, uh, you know what? That's a good question. I got the green one, but I think you can order some other colors. Yeah, oh, I'm sure they have at least a couple. Yeah, I don't yeah. know if it's a no, lot. It's like, sometimes stuff. they only have a couple colors yeah. or something like that. Dude, I got to tell you too. Uh, did you guys see on X showed this? I don't know if other social media uh, places showed this, but did you guys see what happened to, it was like, I want to say 13 or 14 Hezbollah 
you know, uh, members. You know, Hezbollah is a terrorist it's a terrorist, right? yeah. Did you see what they did? No. This is how crazy a, a counterintelligence and whatever is getting. They all use pagers, right, to communicate. Somehow, school. somehow, Israeli special force or whatever made all their pagers explode. Whoa. What? Really? Yes. Without, like, putting explosives in them ahead of time? There's videos, literally. How of does these that work? There's literally videos of these dudes, like, they're at a grocery store. Boom! Blows up. Pagers. What? Exp yes. How did, Doug, does it say how... Because remember, wasn't there a phone that did that because of the battery? Oh my God, look at this. This is what the headline says. It is believed that the devices were infected with malware that intentionally caused them to overheat and detonate. They didn't even have to give them like fake pagers. Wow. They just- 2,700 plus dead? Dead. I don't, or or injured. I think there's eight dead. It, yeah, so there's like people around them that got. Wow, wow where, I mean, where did, how do you how do you only get eight dead and twenty seven hundred hurt? That is, uh, well, yeah. I mean, burns. Think about it. You have a pager in your pocket, and it uh, overheats. Oh, so twenty seven hundred of them actually had it. No, 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 no. I, eight, I think you know, the eight explosion of the got. No, the explosion hurt other people around them. Maybe is what yeah, yeah, maybe is, that is nobody too. else like scratching their head on the math on this. Yes. Okay, eight people understand have these pagers. It was powerful enough to kill eight people. No, but there are thousands of pagers. Oh, okay. Yeah. Only yeah. This, is why, this, this is, is why how many people got killed. Okay. Right? Oh, okay. That's eight, why I did not make according sense. According to this, anyway. so, so, like, so how does a bunch that work? of them got burned or hurt, but some of them died. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, that they didn't cool. have to change their pager. They just they, like I thought. I thought maybe they, they gave them like fake pagers or something like that. No, no, they literally just give them like a virus. Is it just blew it up? Is, oh, is, there's a video right there. Hit Doug. You got to play that. You guys got to yeah, see this. Look, look, look. Boom. Oh, In his pocket. Oh, what? Yep. What? Dude. Wild, right? Now nobody else was injured around, so it wasn't like a huge explosion. That's why, yeah. So it's so if twenty seven hundred were injured, that means twenty seven hundred people. That means twenty seven hundred pagers yeah. went off. Now were they all bad people or did like some Hezbollah? So this is they the all were Hezbollah. I think I don't know about all of them, but the the ones that got killed were. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. That's that crazy. Was like, a, like, did like random people that have that bought that same pager get? No, the, no, no. Hey. I think they were targeted. They were specifically targeted. Uh, interesting. Yeah. It's weird. You could do that. I. That's the part that freaks me out. Can they use your cell phone? Like, can they just do that to stuff that you own? Well, just make it explode. I mean, wow. Justin, what do you know about this? <laughs> You're holding something back, dude. <laughs> I'm not going to open that can, but... Hey, yeah. did you hear that Doug, Doug finally, out of you guys, listened about Masters of Air and binged the whole thing? Oh, you watched it? Yeah, yeah it was that, fantastic. That, the yeah. Documentary? Right? I got to watch that. Oh, yes. I might watch it tonight. I mean, I, I knew I was going to watch it anyway. Yeah, I, know, I knew you yeah, would, too. I like you, that you actually take my oh, advice. It on I'm on Netflix? It's on Apple, Apple. TV. Oh, yeah, I'll watch it. You don't have Apple? That's the one thing I don't have. Do I have to add another one? Yeah. yeah. I have everything. For that one, yes. Apple has a lot of good shows. They do. That's Does why. it? Yes. Yeah, Is it like, worth it? Er, I definitely feel like, get rid of Disney and then just get Apple instead. I, yeah, I, I keep Disney. The production like level, it. okay, so part of what made Masters of Error so good is that they, you could tell they spared no expense on like uh, the actors. So they have all, I, one of my pet peeves about shows on Netflix is that even if it's a good storyline, they you, they may get like one big actor or two and maybe, the rest and then the rest are like, and it's just not good, dude. Yeah. I'm sorry, and and the storyline has to be so good to like carry the yeah, show, yeah. where you have like Masters of Air, like they they spared no expense, like I mean everything from the detail of it, and uh, and then also all the like every actor in it was really I'll check really it out. so Apple does that. I feel like they always have. Speaking really of stuff in the media, P Diddy. Yeah, got, they, they arrested him, but the, he got convicted. Like like this is what yeah. he's getting tried for, right? Yeah. What was it? Prostitution, trafficking, trafficking. trafficking. What else? Laundry. Did ma laundering? Did he get laundering money too, or no? Laundering or laundry? I don't know. Is it laundry? <laughs> laundering? Doing laundry. He's doing laundry. He's laundry. for doing his laundry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> bro, he got busted for all that. Now, what do you guys think? Do you think he start, he's going to start? He's going to start. He's going to start naming he, names. He's singing. No, no. Or he'll get killed. Do you th now was he was he's he too, he's too connected to the to the wrong he's he's connected. Do you to think the, that he that they had to sacrifice him? Yes. Oh, I yeah. think I think uh, there's plenty of political. He's to a lot there's of, plenty of political and more important people. And so like, like, hey, oh, sorry, you got to go down. Yeah, probably, let's get the gangster. The music guy. industry yeah. it goes beyond that, but like just in the music industry alone, like it, it could do a lot of damage if you. And he's the one. He's the one to put the hit on Tupac. So they're like, listen, he can't sing. If he sings, then we're gonna roll him under the bus on all that stuff too. Mm -hmm. So they you know they have they have stuff over. Over his head on that so it's like 
He's yeah. he's got now. He's gonna have to take it on the chin. I haven't seen his his uh, Fifty Cent still post. He, I was watching him more than anything. Fifty Cent, but, yeah, he was I doing all the updates yeah. on like the Diddy situation. It was I, pretty I funny 50 to watch. Cent, he's he's pretty funny. Wow. Some of the stuff, some of the it stuff says that so there's also assault uh, charges that date back all the way to 2008, where um, there was also listen. Combs orchestrated, so it's another focus of the indictment, that Combs, P. Diddy, orchestrated sexual encounters between his victims and male sex workers that he called freak-offs. This is elaborate and produced sex performances that Combs well, you guys saw, directed, you, you saw, masturbated during, and often electronically recorded. You saw all the stories that came out once when it, of all the other like male rappers that they, he made advancements on and stuff like that. So like when it when it first hit the news, and then all yeah. the stories started coming later, all kinds of like uh, bro, it gets, like, cra- it gets young, crazy. Young young rappers started coming Listen, out and sharing like their it gets stories. Crazy. Of, the, this is from yeah. so the raids of his L.A. and Miami homes resulted in the seizure of supplies. For the freak offs, including drugs <laughs> and more than a thousand bottles of baby oil and lubricant. That's a, thou- a thousand. A thousand bottles. Bro. How do you lie about that? Yeah. Oh, I just like. Oh, baby just, oil. It was a, it was a sale. You yeah. know, <laughs> just want to stock up on the sale. You I just, know, I saved, like a, to keep my saved skin. twenty-five cents at Walmart. I like this to last oil month. my skin every once in a while. A thousand. A thousand. <laughs> how big are these freak offs, bro? <laughs> How big and how often are you having them to need a thousand, a thousand bottles at bottles, your house bro. of lube and baby oil? What is that? That's like that's not just a closet, bro. That's like a room, like dedicated to baby oil, bro. You could take baths in that much for a while, for sure. A thousand? Oh yeah, dude. Have I mean, you ever that... seen Dave Chappelle's like version of P Diddy that he's yes. making fun of him? I, yes. like, I don't know if I've seen that. I don't know if uh, I've seen... Is it new or old? Chapstick on. <laughs> it's the real world. Like he did like a whole depiction of the real world is like oh, or, yeah. or like cribs. Yeah. You That's know, like was like P. Diddy. Oh my God. Yeah, it's a old, but then it was like before any of this stuff came out and you're oh, like, so Oh my god, it, he so nailed it. it. Even better. Yeah. Oh wow. Nailed it. That's well, how you ba- know. Like they knew there's they so many knew it. they yeah. knew. They all so knew. how bad does it okay, so how bad and crazy does this stuff get with these celebrities, right? Because you think, oh, they got all this power and money. They're just sleeping with a lot of people. There's, they must get bored at some point and it just gets real there's twisted just, there's some examples like this that it just it, it's weird because then it validates a lot of the wacky crazy stories you've heard yeah. and you're like wait a minute maybe there is some teeth to that story you know well is there isn't there there's like some psychology to this right like yeah. when you when the you can yeah freedom. when you can afford anything and everything like you just have to keep go, like you people go down that rabbit hole of like mm-hmm. i can already have all the sex in the world i want i can already fly in every plane do everything so it's like what's next what's next you just keep playing that game of what's next until it gets oddly well, it weird was, and bad i mean they were kind of speculating that a lot of the other um like producers and people around him that kind of brought him in groomed like him. you groom and like taught him all these and that, like, kind so of, like, i heard that too. and i heard that's what i heard that that it was basically uh he was taught like the epstein formula right mm-hmm. and so that was part so, of it you know the story of king solomon right who they, they think he wrote some of the books of the bible the proverbs and stuff <laughs> like that and apparently the story is he was a king he had thousands of you know, concubines, he had hundreds of wives, all this money, and he just he just didn't feel fulfilled. And apparently he, through prayer, he was given wisdom. And then he wrote all these books. Uh, and he, part of the problem, I guess the challenge was that he was just like them. Like you have all this earthly stuff and it's actually a shitty situation to be because you really realize like, why am I still unfulfilled? I have access to all the things. Mm-hmm. I can do whatever I want. Yeah. But I still feel like something big is missing, and uh, that's why I think there's so much power in that lesson. So much. There's so much power in that lesson. Uh, I'd say this is actually something I always try and and remind myself at the stages of my life of like you know chasing goals and going after things like that is to be so appreciative of where I'm at, what I'm having, and also what's important, and and actually being happy that it is hard to get to there. Yes, because I wouldn't want it all already. I'd have no appreciation for it, and it would. And the and once you learn that the 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 secret sauce or the real enjoyment is actually in the journey of getting there yeah. i would never want someone to shortcut yeah. me there like when i think about it so and, I, and but everybody's guilty of those moments right of like oh my god it's taking yeah. forever i can't get promoted or oh i've been stuck here the whole sauce is not baby oil no <laughs> <laughs> thousands of bottles that's a quote of, hey imagine being the Bro, i'm saying something real powerful you I, take I'm me right sorry to you're taking it <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Take the wind out of your, I, your here goes speech. My, here goes my Instagram reel. Hey, imagine, hey, listen. Imagine uh, come on, the, Dylan, you got to check this guy. Uh, when he's doing so imagine, like, though, you're like, ruined that clip. you're like the investigative, like, you know, the officer or whatever. And you're like, all right, we got a raid going on. You're walking and you open a door. And you're just like, bro, you got to come in here real quick. Come look at this real quick. Right. There's got to be at least a thousand bottles of baby oil. Seriously, it's <laughs> so crazy. What the hell? Like, what do you, you guys do? <laughs> like, ah, like what, what do you do? You find that? I'm running, dude. Yeah, like, I don't oh, want to know what else is in here. Out of here. Did you guys see all the controversy with the, the Ty Tyreek Hill arrest too? No. Oh, you guys didn't see that? Uh -huh. You saw that, didn't you? See that the arrest mm -hmm. with Tyreek yeah. Hill, mm -hmm. he's a football player on the way to the game, <clears throat> and rolled uh, his window up. Yeah, I think he was driving. Like oh, a, I saw. He was like a yeah. Lamborghini. Yeah, yeah. Little McLaren. Like he was oh, driving, okay. and uh, the, and they shows how much I know about cars. I actually, I'm not even 100. percent It looked like a McLaren to me. By the, the by the style of the door, uh, it definitely wasn't Lamborghini. But anyways, he uh, he wouldn't like roll, or he kept his window rolled up. And then when the officer knocked on the window, he told the officer, "Don't knock on my window like that." And then rolled his window back. And then it escalated, right? They pulled him out, got physical with him, arrested him, all stuff that. It's really interesting, uh, you know, the thing that I've been I'm following, like the comments on that people are making. It seems to be kind of right down the middle. Of like how many people like are in the wrong? Yeah, are actually defending him. And listen, yeah. I'm a big Tyreek Hill fan. I love the uh, love his game. Like he's an incredible athlete. Again, yeah. I'm I'm an, uh, I'm I, I like the athlete him him as a person, uh, as a man, as a husband. Uh, like none of that shit at all. Because he's a guy who's got like ten. He's got like ten babies, ten or twelve babies from like nine different all babies, different mamas, whatever. That yeah, yeah, he literally he's the story that came out just recently where he's got. He's uh, impregnated two within like two months right now, and neither one of them are his wife's. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. So he's just not a, a, a good that, dude in the first place. Good decision. Yeah. And then and then and then it's interesting how many people are so quick to blame the cops in this situation. It's like, at what point do 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 they do we give them that respect? I mean, you roll the window up and then you yell at them and they're pulling you over for doing something you're not supposed to yeah. be doing, and then it escalates. It's like you know what I you know what I do with my kids, my little ones. Uh, around in our neighborhood, there's uh, police. Station and there's also a fire station, and I go on walks with them all the time. And anytime we go through and we see the fire station, it, it, sometimes they're outside washing the fire truck or whatever. I always introduce them and I say they they save people's lives. They go on to fire, you know, into places on fire. They help people, and then we go to police station too. These these are the people that protect us from bad guys, and it's a really tough job to do. And sometimes things get real bad. And so now when they see them, thank you, thank you for being a good guy, thank you for helping people, whatever. And I'm just teaching them this because. You're in a situation you're going to encounter a police officer, and there's bad people out there. But, but why put yourself in a situation like that? Where not only that, Sal, but it's so good you're doing that because the uh, media narrative on it is that cops are so bad and cops beat no, people man. and the racism thing and so like and it's it's gotten this way now so they couldn't they couldn't pull the race car because i think there was a, a black guy a cuban guy and somebody else that all did it so it's just like oh shit there goes that card we can't use yeah. that right away so it's just like police brutality we'll just default to that and it's like dude at what point do we not respect authority in a situation like that it's like come on dude yeah i mean it'd be different they just pull them out like it'd that, be different but, if they were doing shit that was like they're not supposed yeah, to. if you didn't see the whole beginning of that video you'd have a different perspective completely yeah. and this is just how a lot of media has distorted all these incidences it's just like you just get this one little piece of it and then you make this quick assumption yeah. of what happened with no context and i get the under i get the the argument from some of the people that are making the statements yeah. like you know it's the cop's job to de-escalate it's like yeah i get it's their job to de-escalate but you have somebody who like he's got tinted yeah. windows they got emotionally they, driven they, after roll, that yeah for sure. exactly and you exactly so the, of course it got escalated with the wrong yeah. way but in that situation okay yeah we could now hindsight we could go okay cop could have done some things a yeah, little bit better, yeah. better for but sure. it's like it doesn't even go there if you weren't being a shit, yeah, you know what I'm saying? it doesn't even go there true. if you're not being disrespectful. Like, yeah. so granted, own both that. parties, you can make an argument for that we're out of line. They but, both have to own those. But things. like you yeah. go in this, and, and here's where I always go and I lean in defense of a cop and that like they're in this job where I don't know if you're a bad guy or not. I, and and even if you are a football player, it's not uncommon for it's NFL players to have guns on them and do shit course. like that. And so, so and you roll up a tinted window on Listen, me when you I pull you over. Like, you got to go home to your family yeah. too. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, yeah. So I I just thought that was really really job. interesting to see the division on online with the and I just, I think it's because of the narrative around police officers to this younger generation that think that they can talk to cops this uh -huh. way, act disrespectful, that we've actually got a divide of people that actually believe that the cop was a person who was way out of line in this situation. It's like, whoa, that's crazy to me. So it's great that you're doing that because yeah. they're going to hear other things on social media. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then if all they need is one 
bad encounter with a cop and then it's going to confirm their bias that oh cops are brutal cops are racist cops are bad and so it's really good that you are thoughtful enough to like plant that seed now so that they, yeah, they at least people, question it they at least question it when that narrative comes out yeah. like well my dad and always also, said they were good I, people. I don't want to raise them to be afraid yeah. of, of police officers yeah, yeah. or afraid or yeah. it's like that they are trying to do a good job they do a hard job they're people just like we are so we're going to go say thank you thank you for what you're doing and be nice and that's that. Yeah. You know? yeah. Shout out. We got a shout out. Um, Hezbollah. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> explosive shout out. They have explosive. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hit them with uh, that. Uh, the shout outs for Motorola. With, that with their new explosive pagers. Hey, we Pager. can shout out our mashups. Oh, actually, let's talk about that and then, for a and then you could talk about the mashups. No, 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 yeah. So uh, uh, let's address that, right? So half shout out, half like explanation on, on what's going on there. I think it's hilarious when I actually saw some people that were complaining that we are producing more free content. <laughs> Those are always my favorite complaints. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Nothing like somebody who complains about shit. More they free get for, stuff. Yeah, hey. more free stuff. <laughs> yeah. You guys are doing new things. So, uh, you know, what, part of our editing team, one of the strategies right now is to do these some of these mashups, right, where we've talked about some of the these all these different topics and it gets mashed they'll up take, together. They'll take bits of different episodes. Right. And, and so our guy is doing that and it's now, it's a sixth episode that's coming out every week and we're doing on that YouTube. right on YouTube. There'll be uh, seven total. Oh, it'll be seven. Yeah, there are going to be two mashups a week. Oh, there are going to be yeah. two a week. So yeah, so now you're getting seven, right? Seven so, days a week. Yeah. So uh, you, by the way, you don't have to listen to it if you don't want to. Um, it's absolutely for free. It's more content that we're trying to produce and it's all topic focused, but a bunch of different clips of us talking about that topic and uh, they're actually uh, for us. They're they're trending very well, and they get bring on a lot of new listeners. That's the purpose of the strategy and why we're doing it. And again, it's just more free content. So for you turds that are complaining about this, is <laughs> hilarious to me. So fly yeah, mind pump show on YouTube. Butcher Box is a company that delivers grass fed meat, heritage pork, wild caught fish, free range chicken to your door. You get a box with frozen quality meat. At incredible prices. If you like protein, you like meat, and you like it to be healthy and quality, and you like to save money, go with Butcher Box. Go to butcherbox.com forward slash mind pump. By the way, if you go through that link in your box free for a year, you can get wild caught salmon, organic chicken breast, or grass fed ground beef included. Plus, they'll give you $20 off. Go check it out. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Matthew from Texas. Matthew, what's up, man? What's going on, man? What's happening, dude? Hey, what's up? Adam, Sound, Justin, I am in awe that I am even get to speak to you guys. And thank you very much for taking my question. Thank you, Doug, for helping me set up everything. And of course, before I get started, I'll make this real quick. Thank you for all y'all do, for all the great contact y'all uh, put out there, um, for all you know, dis demystifying uh, the misinformation that might be out there and being such incredible examples uh, in the fitness community. And because of you guys, I'm actually getting my certification through NASM uh, to get uh, become a personal trainer. And I aspire to be half the trainers that you guys are. And of course, ideally to be the best. Great. But <laughs> Thank you, man. with all that being said, <laughs> I know you guys are on time. So I will get to my question and uh, hope you guys will be able to help me out with this. I'm sorry if I messed up with the Zoom, but I want to know, in the past, I have um, I've heard in the past at least um, I've heard with when it comes to regards of deadlifting, to basically go back to or reset the deadlift position, um, and to make that clear, it's at the top of the rep to stretch my butt out. And from my understanding, um, I don't understand if that would be really applied to full range of motion or not. Um, I'm trying to basically uh, keep in mind uh, tuts, and I always do want to have full range of motion to get the most bang for my buck uh, when doing um, workouts. But when I do reset at the top of the rep, I feel I lose momentum, I feel I lose rhythm, and um, I, just, I, I just don't like it when I do it. It just makes me feel weaker. <laughs> but as a side note, I've been working out for about nine years, um, and the past six months or so, I've been exposed to you guys. Love it. But I would love to get y'all's um, opinion on that. Am I missing out on gains by not extending my butt at the top of the rep? Or, or should I uh, do that uh, to get the most bang for my buck? I'm not quite sure I understand what you mean yeah, by he, setting at the top or extending your butt at the top. What, what do you mean exactly? Explain that to me. Because so, common advice is to reset every rep. That's and, at the bottom. And let, the, let it at the bottom. Yeah. But as soon as you said top and stretch your butt, you got me confused. So what are we doing? Definitely. 
So when I uh, set up for the deadlift position and I go down, I, you know, extend, you know, bend my knees and then pull up. Yep. When I'm pulling up and go back down, I lower the weight down. But then, um, and I don't know if you want me to demonstrate it right now Please. or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, help yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah no, it's all on. good. Okay, yeah, I, I hope help. this is a good position. Yeah, yeah, you're good. We can, as long as we can see your myself. hips. Yeah, we can see. Yeah, you're good. Um, is this Put look so good? Yeah, yeah, you're good. <laughs> okay, so basically when I go up, I go down and I lift lift up, straight up. Yeah. And go down and my knees are still bent right here. Usually I just take off from right here instead of extending my butt out like that so you extend so actually, out and then so get back just, into position exactly am i missing out on gains by not extending out or should i what am i um what i usually do is i just use the momentum i usually have go down um up and go down again and then go from right here up again yeah does that make sense yeah, yeah. it does yeah, I, yeah. some people <laughs> We're splitting hairs, so it's fine here. So we are, but you, I know you see the same thing I see with him. Like you're picking the weight up, and you're probably doing too much quad drive in the first yeah. place, and that resetting your your ass back yeah. is throwing it back into a hinge. It's a, hin a hip hinge movement. Don't think of picking the bar up. You're not picking the bar up off the floor. You're hinging it off the floor, and so I can tell already just by what you were just demoing. That if I was training you, I would want you to slide your hips and reset like that because what I see you're doing is you're picking the bar up. You don't pick the bar up. That's not how, what you're doing. Your arms are staying stiff and you're wanting your hamstrings, your glutes to be tight and then you're hinging forward. That causes the bar to come up. So thinking about mm -hmm. it different, you're not picking the bar up. You're hinging the hips forward and back and that's what's lowering and lifting the bar. Does that so, make sense? I think so. So some people... Um, so I think it's best for most people to let the hit hit the ground with the weight, let the bar sit there on the ground, get your position good, and then lift again. So you're not touch and go. That's a real extra. I mean, it's an, that's a way to do deadlifts, touch and go. But uh, for most people, it's better to let yeah, the bar sit. Less favorable. Version. And then lift, right? So you, you put it down, get your position, lift again. Now, some people walk away from the bar and come back. I know Lane does this. He'll deadlift, put it down, yeah. let go of the bar, stand up. Get back. Now, what he's doing is he's training himself for a competition where you're doing a one rep max. And so he's training every step of moving up to the bar and getting in position, which includes walking up to the bar, getting your hands on. Okay, is, is that going to give you better or worse gains? I think we're splitting hairs here. If your technique is good. Now, what Adam's saying is is he sees there may be some some value to improving your technique from the reset, which which may be true. But if your tech, if your technique is good, regardless, uh, doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter if you move your hips back and then move them back into position, or let go of the bar, get back down. So long as you let the bar sit on the floor for a few seconds before you lift it back up. But here's how you know uh, we need to improve your technique: is you should feel you should feel stiff and tight in the the glutes and hips when you're on the when that bar's on the floor. There should be no <laughs> your your shoulders to your hand should be a straight vertical line. If your shoulders are moving back because you're squatting too low, that means your hips are too low. So when you grab the bar, if you take a picture or video of yourself doing a deadlift, the initial part of the deadlift, your shoulders and hands should be straight lined up. If your shoulders are behind your hands or in front of your hands, then your positioning is off. Yeah. We have two I think, really good, sorry, Justin, oh, my yeah, pump TV videos. That yeah, I just think that um, – from your earlier question, you're talking about like time under tension. I, I just don't feel like the deadlift's a great uh, exercise to really focus on the hypertrophy uh, style of, of uh, training alongside like approaching it more of a strength specific exercise and getting the maximal output as possible. So that's why we kind of want to drop it off, reset, you know, and then and then get to the point where we can tighten everything up. Uh, and and get that form ironed out very specifically for this because uh, you're going to get just way more out of it and then use, you know, your other types of exercises for the hypertrophy for maintaining that constant <laughs> yeah. tension. I think it's, it's a better way to look at so it. So when I train clients, for the most part, when we would do a deadlift, we would do our first rep, bring it down, we'd pause it on the floor, get our, make sure the technique was good, and then come back up. For some clients, I would have them bring it down to the floor, and then I would have them let go of the bar and stand up. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I would do this with some clients is because their first rep was always so bad 
that I wanted them to continue practicing that first rep. Because what happens when you do that first rep and then bring it down and your hands are still on the bar and you're resting on the floor, for a lot of people, that second, third rep look better. Some people it's worse, but some people it looks better. Sometimes I would have clients where that first rep is so bad and so hard, and then if I had them stay on the bar, they'd get into better technique. And I said, no, 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 I want you to let go of the bar, stand up, let's start over. And we would start over every single rep so that they could finally, that first rep, really get into proper position. Again, this is why you'll see power lifters do this because they only, have, they only get one, rep, one try, they get one rep when they do their lift. So that's really the value of the whole reset, you know, completely get off the bar, whatever value of it. But if your technique is good and you're pausing on the floor in between your reps, you're fine. Go to go to Mind Pump TV and look up uh, the deadlift video with Jordan Syatt and mm -hmm. look up the one with Jordan Shallow and then look up the one that I do with the PVC pipe. There's three really good videos that mm -hmm. kind of cover a lot of what we're talking about and also really improve your you will improve your technique. It's a very technical exercise. Yeah. So I, I, I just, it takes a, I mean, I, to this day, I've been doing it for quite some time. I'm still, you know, it takes a lot of reps yeah. to get the technique really, yeah, that really fixed well. position with your knee. And then the, uh, PVC pipe down your back's really going to help you train that hinging part of it. So I would definitely spend a lot of time with that. Figuring Watch that out. those videos, Matt, you'll get a lot of value from watching those three videos. So they're on the mind pump TV Absolutely. on YouTube. Watch those. Absolutely. I de definitely will um, give that. I'll give, give those three videos a look. I um, re really appreciate that because and, and Justin, I didn't even really think about that. I, I've been really into hypertrophy uh, training, so um, think of it as a thinking as a strength, more of a strength workout. I think is the way to go, and especially with resetting. I I, I have been using. I guess the, it has been a, a little bit of a cheap deadlift. I don't really do deadlifts as much. I'm just now getting back into the whole commercial gym. I used to do a lot of apartment gym workouts oh. with like a Smith machine. So yeah. doing a dead like actual free weight deadlifts. Um, it's been a little bit of a challenge. So I think you're right. I need to focus on that form and, you know, really at the very top of the rep, extend my butt just to make sure I'm doing technique well. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good, man. Yep. I appreciate that. And again, thanks for all you guys do. You and it, Adam, I have joined that. It was, is it an Instagram new trainers? Yes. Yeah, right? excellent. Or, yeah. Yes. Hope you're getting some value awesome. from that. Absolutely. Right well, thank you very much for your time, guys. I um, appreciate it. And hope you have a good one. You got right, it. Yeah, you too, dude. I'd like to do, maybe that we'll do a fitness tip today on that. That's a really good kind of nuanced discussion, like what you were just talking about right now. And it was, it felt like it was a little bit all over the board for him. But didn't you, you saw when he did it. Yeah, I yeah, saw yeah, it. We, I don't know if it was because he was trying to show us, like he wasn't focused. But you're right. If that was the case, resetting would be would be best. Like let go of the bar, get back in a position. Yeah. Because uh -huh. I know we. Because yeah, some people do lift it okay and then they squat it down and then they're in the squat position when they try to come back seems up. like he's trying to do two different things yeah. like and combo it so yeah he needs to kind of just isolate that but the, it's a, the deadlift is i mean all exercises are skill based they all are 100%. some just require more skill than others and you're better off mastering the skill than you are try, especially with a big gross motor movement like a deadlift mm -hmm. rather than trying to feel it in a particular area or time under tension and blah 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 like it's a complex skill uh, so just practice the skill, master the skill, the gains will come. Arguably the most skilled or most challenging basic exercises, barring none, like we're not counting any sort of explosive. It's definitely up there. Yeah, yeah. like, I mean, if you're talking about some explosive stuff that like Olympic lifters do, that's, no, that's a whole nother level. Yeah, yeah. But I'd say when you talk, think about foundational movements, mm -hmm. it's probably one of the most complex when it comes to technique. It's definitely up there. Our next caller is Bill from West Virginia. Hey, Bill. What's going What's on, Bill? Bill? Hey, guys. How are you doing? <laughs> kind of surreal. <laughs> Yeah, what's going we, on? How, how can we help, help you? you? Yeah. Well, I got um, got a question for you. I just got off. I'm 64 years old, and I just returned from a 500-mile um, backpacking trip in Colorado on the Colorado wow. Trail. Wow. Hey. Wow. Um, so, and I've been following your guys' programs for um, eight, 18 months or so, and made some real good success early on. Uh, with uh, muscle growth, et cetera. But um, confirming everything you guys have said, uh, when I was on the trail eating, you know, 20 something hundred calories, that's all I could carry per day, but burning probably 5,000 calories every day in eight to 10 hours a day of hiking, um, I lost 28 pounds in six weeks. Mm. Um, unfortunately, it seems like a lot of it was muscle. I did lose some fat, which was great. Uh, my waist is certainly um, probably three inches smaller than it was when I started. But I went back to the gym here a week ago, or not a week ago, two days ago, to 
my first workout after I've gotten back and and there was noticeable strength loss in most every upper body type lift because I think my body just kind of burned muscle mm. from the upper body because it wasn't using it as much during the course of this hike. Sure. So the question is, what's the best way to regain this muscle, but, you know, lose a little, I have a little bit more fat to lose, but, you know, keep that off and, and take advantage of the weight loss. Um, so I, I'm not really worried too much about weight, but I am worried about, you know, fat percentage and, and, and getting my strength gains back. I, I, I've had several of your programs. I've been using anabolic and, and should I go back to anabolic at a much lower weight for all the various exercises and just work my way back up? Or should I do something different? Well, I got good news for you, Bill. Yeah. If you if you lose muscle, in other words, you had it and you lost it, gaining it back is easy. Quick. Yeah. Yep. It's it's so easy that the mistakes people make are not uh, that they're working out, but rather they overdo it or they overcomplicate things because they're like, oh my God, I gave this muscle back. It's going to come back very quickly and very easily. It's something called muscle memory. It's a real thing. And you're going to gain that muscle back if you simply exercise appropriately. Okay, so the question is, what's going to be appropriate? Mm -hmm. Well, you haven't strength trained for a while, you've lost some muscle, so start out really slow, yep. very slow. So MAPS Anabolic is a great place to start, but I wouldn't start in phase one. I would do the pre-phase. How about MAPS 15? Yeah, 15. How about could, 15? 15, 15 so would be good sense. too. If yeah. he, He's already got Anabolic, you do pre-phase, but you could do MAPS 15. Yeah. So run MAPS 15 or do pre-phase Anabolic mm -hmm. and do that and then jump. And then after maybe a month or so, jump back in. But within that 30-day period, you're going to see a lot of muscle gains. I mean, you, Especially yeah. if you feed yourself it, it's properly. It's going to come on quick. You are in uh, almost – okay, so I lost 30 pounds, most of it being muscle in the last three months, not lifting. I, start, I started yesterday, day one, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm, I'm documenting it. So this is going to go live on the Mind Pump TV YouTube channel so you can actually watch this process. And I'm starting with MAPS 15. So the plan is MAPS 15 – I'm going to run that all the way through, and then I'll go to MAPS Anabolic. But again, uh, to Sal's point, the, and I communicate this in the videos, that this is the mistake people think is they, they want to go right back to what it was they were doing before, and it's like, I don't need to. I haven't been lifting weights for three months, and so any stimulus with weights is, a, is going to move me in the positive direction, and I'm more likely to overdo it and overreach because I've done absolutely really nothing with lifting weights. And so... Uh, less is more in this situation. And the good news is for you and me, we've lifted and we've built all that muscle before. So it will come so long as you're hitting that protein intake and keeping your diet in, in check, it will we'll build that muscle right back. And that would be the main focus that I would tell you is okay, Bill, let's make sure we hit our protein. You know, maybe increase your calories by a couple hundred calories from where you currently were at, or definitely higher than where you were on your hike. And just follow MAPS 15, and we should see ourselves gain strength and muscle pretty much almost every week uh, as you as you progress totally. through it. And that, and that was kind of the ancillary question, Adam, because the um, I was as a result of the hike, I was in a, a cut. I mean, clearly, I mean, with what I was doing. So, you know, I don't know where to put my calories at this point because I'm sure my body is just like totally confused as to what the hell I'm doing or not doing now, and 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 which where. Sh should I continue a cut or should I go ahead and start so another great, increasing calories? Another great question. So what I'm doing also, and you can follow kind of the same path, I'm actually not even like overcomplicating the diet piece. I'm actually eating when I'm hungry, making good choices. So the, the main focus is to get enough protein because you know how important that is. That's the like I want to make sure I hit all protein-centric meals. And I'm just going to track this week. Start tracking what I eat when I'm hungry and just, again, make good choices. So And then at the end of that week – I'll kind of track and see, did that put on a bunch of weight? Did that maintain my weight? And how many calories was I at? I would call that probably my baseline. And then I'd stay there for probably another week or two. And then if you, if you still feel like you have an appetite and your workouts are feeling good and you're getting strong, maybe bump the calories, 150, 200 calories, and just keep listening to the body as you go through that process. But you know exactly where to start right now, Like it's hard for either one of us to guess, right? So I actually would just eat when I'm hungry make good choices, track that, what it ends up being, and then the results of that, right? Now, obviously, if you eat when you're hungry and then the week goes by and you put seven pounds on, you probably are eating too much. But if 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 you do a good job, I think, of making good choices while strength training, you know, you should only put on a couple pounds at most, one or two pounds in that week. That means you probably picked a really good calorie to start at. And then I'd probably hang right around there just focusing I, on the protein. You know, you, you'll be surprised, Bill. I think what will happen is your, your appetite, if you're training properly, your appetite's going to go up. Yeah. You're going to get this really strong anabolic signal, 
You have muscle memory. It was just recently that you lost this muscle because of activity. And feed it. And, and so you're going to strength train a little bit. Muscle's going to go. Your body's primed. It's so primed to gain that muscle back. It'll also stimulate your appetite. So you're going to find your appetite's going to go up. But don't be surprised if you gain more than a pound or two of muscle a week. I mean, I've seen some pretty crazy things when it comes to muscle memory. And it really depends on the individual. In some extreme cases, there's there's some numbers that uh, that are almost unbelievable. But don't be surprised. I mean, if you just kind of listen to your body, strength train properly, hit your protein targets, your appetite will kind of move you in the right direction. Tomorrow, I think my team is putting that video up. And so you and I are like on the same path right now. So okay. you could totally follow the journey. And I'm doing, I'm talking my through it too. It's not just me working out. It's me communicating my my food choices and the training intensity and i'm literally like the advice i would give you is what i'm giving myself right now so it'll be a good one for you to kind of follow along and you can hear kind of how and i'm trying to troubleshoot too like how many calories should i start at i'm not really overthinking it i'm eating when i'm hungry and i, I tell you what yesterday i was telling katrina she was blown away she's like oh my god you're eating so much i haven't seen you eat like this in months i'm like yeah no i'm hungry i'm like i can tell her i just but i just whole foods if i wanted to eat again went back get another serving of chicken and rice wanted to eat again got some greek yogurt i wanted to eat again so i went and had some cottage cheese like just if i was hungry i was going to feed it and i was going to give it good choices and then i'll see how that at the end of the week see how i how that plays out about where i'm at and if i think i'm correct i should just put on muscle and to sal's point he's right you know, there's a chance I could put six pounds on, but it'll look good. It'll feel good. And you'll notice that. Like it, if you do jump weight a high amount of uh, pounds, it'll feel and it feels right, then you're probably right on yeah. the right course. If you put on seven or 10 pounds and you feel like you put on a mm -hmm. lot of body fat, then you're probably overshooting calories. But again, I'll, I'm going to communicate this through this process. So definitely follow along. Okay. That's, that's great information. I, before I go, I want to give a shout out to Justin. I ran performance before this hike. As I said, I'm 65, not quite as agile as I used to be. And and um, that performance program really helped me on these rock scrambles and and other things where my ankles and knees and, and legs were taking a beating. So I appreciate that, too. Awesome, man. That's, All right. That's you're, rad to you're, hear. You're kicking ass, yeah. Bill. And we'll send you Mass 15 if you don't got it, Bill, so you have that one. Great. I have it. Don't worry about sending it. I have almost <laughs> yeah. all of your programs and and uh, love love the stuff and lo love your podcast. Thank you, Bill. Right on. Thanks, Good work, Bill. Bill. It. Thank you. I love Bro, those nothing, are my favorite to talk to. Right there. Nothing, That's I love, inspiring for me. Yeah, and Hell I love yeah. nothing more than people who are uh, you know twenty years older than me who are into fitness. It's just it's always it's always been inspiring me. You know what's crazy about muscle memory? Okay, so just for people to understand just how powerful. It can be, and it depends on the individual, how much muscle you lost, your situation, all that stuff. But I remember one time I, I, I had injured my knee and I wasn't able to train my legs. I think it was like six weeks. I did nothing at all for my legs. And then I measured them. I don't remember what the measurement was. I measured them and I trained my legs once. I did one workout and it was nothing. It was like the lightest weight, one whatever. And I measured them the next day and I, had, I gained a quarter inch. It's crazy. I gained a quarter inch on my legs in a day. So, I mean, was it pure muscle? I don't know, but that's like a, and I could feel it. I was walking around and I measured them. Sure enough, quarter inch. I've seen some crazy things with that's muscle. That's why it's memory. an investment, you know, yeah. like all that work you put in and that's then right. you step away from it, but like getting it back is, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty wild. quick. It's it, wild. 100%. And this is also, we talked about this the other day on the podcast about this is what a lot of trainers use this as a hack to like try and market themselves uh, yeah. because trainers that have built a lot of muscle over years, I mean, you're going to watch it with me. You're going to see me jump like that. And those are abnormal results results for somebody who's never trained but if you've been training for a long yeah. time and you've put that investment you know in, it's funny that doesn't yep. matter the pictures are gonna make everybody get so crazy oh they will yeah, they'll think oh he's taking all kinds of this it. he's doing that so, <laughs> i can't i mean i addressed that comments. so in the in the video i addressed it said, listen everyone's gonna say this yeah. i'll tell you i'll tell you guys like i'll i probably will take some peptides i probably will do some stuff but i'll announce it when i do but what you're gonna see yeah. right out the gates this is all i got going on so hey real quick sorry to interrupt you look we have a sale this month on some programs we have a beginner program map starter it's 50 percent off then we have a bundle that's different. It's called the Starter Bundle. That includes our most popular programs. That's also 50% off. So if you're interested in that, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Our next caller is Caroline from Oregon. Hi, Caroline. Hello, hello. How can we help you? Hey, first of all, thank you for having me. I'm so excited. Love you guys. Love the podcast. I've learned so much since listening to you. So again, thank you for having me. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to jump in with my question. Um, a little bit of background. I'm currently 33 years old. I'm hovering around 115 um, body weight. 
I have no issues growing muscle in my upper body, but really struggle with gaining muscle in my lower body. Um, genetically, I also tend to store my body fat in my upper body, less so in my lower body. So yeah, genetically, I feel like that's just the situation I'm at. Um, I did do anabolic. Um, I finished that, I think, probably two or so months ago. Um, along with doing anabolic, I was doing your no BS six pack, um, which I really loved. And I feel like I gained a lot of definition in my abs. Um, but yeah, basically, I am battling between wanting to um, grow my lower body while also defining my abs. So a little bit of a, um, yeah, struggle with like knowing if I need to bump my calories up in order to gain mass in my lower body or do a little bit of cut to lose like the last of my body fat in my upper body. So that's just been like a constant battle for me. Um, and so my question is basically about bulking, cutting, trying to gain lower body mass. Um, I've been really good at tracking my calories and macros for the past year or so. So I'm currently trying to aim for 2,300 calories per day. Um, I really haven't changed much on the scale weight wise for like the past year or so. Um, it's hovered anywhere between like 112. And I think my highest weight was probably like 117. Okay. Okay. Caroline. So, uh, so, okay. Something. So we're, I think you sent a picture, so we'll take a look at this. This will help me as well. But do you have, are you an athlete? Do you have an athletic background? No, I haven't. I was never athletic. It wasn't until my adulthood when I started like dabbling in the gym and it's been about a year or so of me being properly consistent with it. Yeah. Okay. I, I think we yeah. have enough, we have enough information. Okay. So, so, so someone like you, you're pretty lean, you're fit. Um, a lot of people don't realize this, but you can bulk into being leaner. You can bulk into definition. In other words, you don't have to choose between bulking or cutting when you want more definition, especially if you want to grow uh, muscle in your lower body. If you were to gain seven pounds of muscle right now, and not a single pound of body fat, you become leaner. Even if you put one pound on, you right? Still so you're, you're leaner as a percentage of your body weight. So, but just by looking at you and seeing where you're at, I would say, go into a a small bulk, a small surplus. Like, don't go crazy with the bulk, but go into a small surplus and focus on getting stronger. Now, as far as the parts of your body that you want to focus on, I like Maps Muscle Mommy for you. That program is written for what you're talking about. It emphasizes lower body gains. There's, of course, upper body exercises on there as well, so it's all well-programmed. We're not, uh, we're always trainers at heart, so we're never going to develop an unbalanced program, but it is developing areas that women tend to want to develop more, which includes things like your butt and hamstrings. I think that'd be the perfect program for you, but alongside with that, go in a small bulk. Yep. Don't try to get leaner by cutting. Try to get leaner by bulking, and that's totally possible if you're not in a crazy bulk and you're building muscle and not adding body fat. I hope that makes sense. So the, the question becomes, where where do you put your calories? If you said you're targeting 2,300 and that's not putting any weight on you whatsoever, I'd go to 2,500. Perfect. A couple so hundred that, calories. Yeah, so a couple hundred calories up, train, train in a bulk, and it, like Sal's saying, if you do the right amount, like you don't go sloppy bulking, go eat 3,000 and you're throwing milkshakes and all kinds of, like that's where your abs will start to disappear, right? As you bulk, which by the way, still might, would serve you because you, to add the surplus of calories while you're straight training your legs is going to build muscle in your legs, but the overspill, the extra will also go to body fat. If yeah. we do just the right amount of, you know, two or 300 calorie bump, we should start to see some nice gains on your legs while simultaneously keeping your abs or even leaning them out a bit. So that's a, a perfect way to kind of get, you know, have your cake and eat it too. Here's, here's an easy way to do it. I'll, I mean, I, there's a preferred way, and then I'll give you the easy way. Preferred way, add a couple hundred calories, whole foods. Make sure you, your protein is high. Here's an easy way to do it. Eat what you're currently eating, add a 50-gram protein shake. And now you're in a slight surplus, extra protein. Protein is far less likely to be turned into body fat than carbs and, and fats. And it's easy because you just eat what you're eating. Just add a 50-gram shake to your, to your daily routine. 
and follow MAPS Muscle Mommy. And what will happen is you'll gain strength and muscle at a nice even pace without gaining body fat. And as a result, you'll get leaner. Okay. And would I just stay at like 2,500 calories until I start seeing I gains? would. I would keep trying to increase yeah. calories until you get to a point where you feel like you're, the calories are so high you're starting to put body fat on. Yeah. Like if you, so I would keep, if you're my client, I'd be, I'd, okay, let's go up to 2,500. Then you're like, you come back to me after there's three weeks and you're like, Adam, I'm just, I'm hovering around the same weight. I'm not putting any weight on. All right, let's go to 2,700 calories. Yep, yep. And then we'd be at 2,700. You're like, Adam, like, you know, I put on a one pound, but then I've been stuck as well. Okay, let's go another 200. And I keep doing that to you until you're like, Adam, this is so much food. I'd be like, okay, let's reverse. Let's go the other way now. Let's lean out for a little bit. And then you're going to see yourself get shredded. Yeah. So. But do, do, does what I'm saying make sense though, Caroline? If you were to gain muscle without a single pound of body fat, you're leaner. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, no, it totally does. I just, I feel like, yeah, maybe I'm just not eating enough because my protein is, I'm always over my protein typically like it's over my body weight. So I'm at least getting 120 grams plus, usually like 120 to 145. That's great. Sometimes That's more great. than that. Good. Protein is like not an issue. I will say it's like a struggle to get to 2,300 calories if so, I'm not, if I'm like conscious about not eating just like junk stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I eat pretty clean. I just, it's hard to eat that much. Yeah, that's why a shake might be easy. Yeah, this, and, and you know what? Make it really palatable. Have a peanut butter smoothie type of shake. Make it a good one. Make yeah. it something that's like really tasty at the end of your day that adds the protein and it, it's okay. Yeah. You can you can afford you can afford to go over on calories. It's gonna get and, partitioned. And eating over more muscle. protein than hitting your like right now you're you're hitting your targets, right? Eating more isn't gonna hurt you. Yeah. Um, the excess calories is, is going to contribute to the muscle gains, whether they come from proteins, carbs, or fats. I just like a shake because it's fast and easy, especially when you're saying it's hard to eat more food. It's like, okay, let's just add a shake. And then change the workout programming. I mean, what you were doing was great, but if you really want to focus on lower body, uh, MAPS Muscle Mommy has a bit of a different volume structure than the other programs because of who we were targeting. Your your response to gives me some insight on probably what's happening. If you struggle to hit 2,300 and it like takes work to do that, you probably have days where you are in a nice little surplus, but then you run days where you're in a deficit. And so, and, and when you, when you zoom out over yeah. a month, you're probably kind of just hovering at maintenance. And so we're not getting enough calories to actually put the muscle on the legs like you want. And so you just need to be more yeah. uh, tactical and strategic about hitting that number consistently and following a program like Muscle Mommy. It's going to come. Caroline, are you eating a good breakfast? Yeah. I mean, I am, I try to eat at least 30 grams of protein with my breakfast. So that's either like oatmeal or um, Greek yogurt or eggs. Make uh, make breakfast one of your bigger meals. It's going to make it so much easier to hit your calories. If you're if you're saving it for the end of the day, that's when it's, people start to get behind the eight ball, and it gets very difficult. I would say make breakfast bigger. Um, it gets it's just for most people it's easier. Now some people are not like that. Some people are like this. If I eat too big for breakfast, I feel terrible. But uh, for most people that I've worked with, when it comes to like trying to get more calories. If I focus on breakfast, we tend to be able to do it easier. That that and or the days that you miss that have the tasty shake. That is it, like to me an easy tasty way. Tasty shake. Yeah, you have a, <laughs> a peanut butter banana smoothie. We'll like that. I can always put that down. At least for me, I don't know if you like stuff like that, but I mean if something that tastes good like that. I mean it, that right there was an easy way to get an additional three four hundred calories. Totally. So try that. Okay. So overall, it sounds like this is a calorie issue. Yep. Yes. Yes. Yep. 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 Okay. Okay. Definitely. We'll send you Maps Muscle Mommy if you don't got it. I, I do have it, actually. Oh, uh, awesome. uh, yeah. I knew I liked you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Good job. Are you in our forum? No. All right, let's get you in our forum. Yeah. Let us know how it goes in 30 days. Yeah, Follow keep, up, please. Yeah, keep us posted. Okay, I will. All right, Carol. Thank you. Okay, thanks, guys. You got it. All right. That whole concept of bulking to get leaner, I think uh, we need to communicate it more often. Uh, because it sounds like it doesn't make sense. Like, what do you mean? I'm eating more and I'm going to get... That's because the traditional bulk is eat whatever you want. That's, yeah. And you also just the, the word it bulk, with, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what, like, bulk means, oh, I get to eat pizza. Yeah. I get to have ice cream. <laughs> That's what bulk means to <laughs> so many people. Pizza even, in the, even in the fitness space. I know, I know. So if the fitness leaders 
you know, interpret I, a bulk I've, that way. Of course, the I've one hundred percent experienced this where I've, I've gone to cut. Oh, I'm struggling. I'm only at you know, I got down to eight percent body fat. It was really hard for me. Then I did like a three week you know bulk, and then I tested my body fat it was like seven and a half percent. It's like what is going on? Yeah, this doesn't make any sense. And then I did the math. I'm like, oh, I just I built muscle. That's what happened. Look, if you like the show, head over to our Instagram. Find Justin, Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump DeStefano and Adams at Mind Pump Adam. All right, I know you liked that episode. If you did, check this one out. 30% body fat. For men, this is way too high. This is actually a bit high for women as well. So in today's episode, we're talking about how you can go from 30 to 10. What is 10% body fat? This is when you have a visible six pack. Can you go from 30 to 10%? Yes, it's possible. But not if you guess along the way. So we're going to talk about how you can do that in today's episode. Now, there's a huge range, right, of like body types. Yes. Some people can run uh, a little bit heavier uh, and, or a little bit higher body